So this is typically what organizations are sold. So this is what they buy, you know, conceptually. Here's the process. In Salesforce, we have a lead. That lead is qualified. We convert to an opportunity account contact. We go through. Everything works out swimmingly. We quote the customer. The customer says, absolutely. I don't even want to negotiate. This is such a good deal. And we close that opportunity as one. And then as that, goes over, as that happens, uh, we automate uh, the creation of the sales order in ERP. That data is reflected back in Salesforce and in ERP. Um, in terms of, of provisioning and delivery and invoicing and all that stuff, um, we get the product or the you know, service or whatever it is to the customer. And it's fairly straightforward, and we can you know, make this happen. This is what typically is, is bought um, at this level. However, as you get into discovery session, you start to get down to another layer of business process. What exactly happens today? You're able to look at all the people involved, all the steps involved, to make this happen. Uh, it's important here, just as a side note, to go into these discussions, uh, into internal business processes um, in, a positive, in a positive way. Approach it from a positive place uh, rather than a lot of the times, and we've all been there, um, some of us may be there today, um, we look at our organizational you know, internal processes um, and kind of shake our heads. We could be doing a lot better. But at the end of the day, we all have to work together towards a common goal. And there might be a reason that, you know, one or more of us you know, doesn't understand about why something happens this way. There could be a perfectly valid reason for us. You know, on the other hand, it just needs to be fixed. Um, but we need to approach it in a positive way um, to really, I think, enact change, especially with a lot of you know, subject matter experts and a lot of, of owners you know, from a business process perspective that you need to have involved to get to what's the truth, what is really happening today. We can define it. Um, but it's, it's much more complex, I think, than it's initially sold. Okay, so this is what we discover. Uh, the reality of this is taking it through that process, um, there's a lot of data points, and there's a lot of dependency. So, for example, you see in these two visuals, uh, the customer lies up to the account. Customer and SAP or Oracle and SAP lies up to the account. Now, what's what's really great? Let's look at you know we want to see invoices. We want to see um, you know product invoice because that's when we recognize right now. We want to see invoices in Salesforce. We want to report against that um, against you know for a customer product related to a, a series or set of opportunities. This is what we thought would happen. Here's what actually happened. That kind of deal. Now. That sounds great. And looking at it this way, sure. But there are inherent dependencies in these stacks here. So for example, the data needs to have a level of integrity that that invoice can reference. Not just the invoice and the invoice lines are created, but you need to have programmatic reference to a separate object in Salesforce. And the separate object is the customer or account. Um, you know, typically a ship to, a bill to, maybe a pay from or you know, sold, sold to. Um, that reference needs to be in place and also to the product. And then the product you know, needs to have a reference you know, to, a, uh, to a price book um, and then to a you know, price book entry and all these different things where instead of just one integration point invoices, we're actually talking about almost 10 integration points based on inherent dependencies. Now, if the data is not valid for one of the ship to, like a ship to in that instance, if it's not valid, then we don't want that invoice to reference that ship to. We want to call that out and we don't want to put that data in there. Okay, because it just doesn't give the whole truth about it. And a lot of the time what we should be doing is we should you know, prevent an integration from creating an invoice. That's the best practice thing to do. Or notifying, there's alternatives um, like chatter notifications or messaging or you know, special exception handling with automation to notify the appropriate parties to go in and fix it. There are ways to remediate that. But those things need to be in place because what we should be doing is not creating the invoice. And if we're not creating the invoice or any corresponding invoice lines, we're not giving the full picture to the business, to you know, upper management executives. You know. So there are a lot of dependencies here uh, on the data side. So you need an integration platform um, to manage all of this. Um, I, I don't know how to, <laughs> how to sugarcoat that. Um, there are a lot of options out there, and we'll get into them. You need an integration platform because it, it adds that layer of abstraction so that you know, the, uh, the hub and spoke. Uh, event and error handling native, um, which can be a pain to build into either Salesforce or BES or something like that. Uh, transformation, translation, which is really heavy lifting without something like this. Uh, protocol conversions, queuing, buffering, you know, the, the list goes on. Okay. Um, this, again, upfront initial investment, but point to point, the, <laughs> the short, mid, and long-term investment is going to dwarf you know, what an integration platform investment would be upfront, or even if you pay for it annually. I mean, God forbid you, you upgrade ERP. But if you have point to point, then what are you going to do? I mean, it's, there are probably more steps than the initial project. So 
So just quickly, test and breathe, integration platforms. Uh, MuleSoft, um, disclaimer, we are a MuleSoft partner. Um, we chose to formalize partnership with MuleSoft and work with them for a bunch of reasons. Um, we think that the hybrid integration space um, is ideal in the enterprise, and that's a lot of our customers. Um, Gartner ranks uh, MuleSoft as the only vendor top right quadrant for on-prem and uh, a cloud uh, integration platform. That serves. Uh, it's open source, which I like. It um, has over 210,000 active developers uh, in their community, 10,000 published APIs, hundreds of pre-built connectors. Okay? Um, you can build your own connectors on top of this platform, which is, again, another best practice to say. Um, I mean, there are 119 Salesforce connectors alone, you know, as an example, for RealSoft. So, for the org, and for Workday, and for, for Oracle, and SAP Financials, and so this is it's a lot of the reason why we decided to do that. Um, and they lead with the API. You know, they're, they're pioneers in that sense. Um, IBM, Cast Iron, which we also, we also support several customers today. Um, they're leveraging uh, Cast Iron. Uh, it's a good market leader. It's mature and stable. It's super, super flexible, okay, uh, from a performance standpoint, and also how far you can extend it. Um, and there are also a lot of pre-built connectors um, to a bunch of legacy systems, uh, ERP solutions, that kind of deal. So. Um, it's also an excellent solution. Um, Informatica, um, typically on the data side, it's built for data integration, um, although they're moving in a different direction as well. Uh, Informatica Cloud. Um, it's capable of large-scale batch processes. These ETL routes, they allow for complex data transformation and all this cool stuff. But if you're doing BI, you should be probably talking about Informatica. You should be talking about you know, MuleSoft too, uh, but you know, their Informatica is really tried and true in the, uh, in the BI space, you're moving a bunch of data and transforming a bunch of data to, uh, to warehouse. Um, and they also have pre-built connectors. 